possibly through. Oh, hello, everybody, and welcome to Torch Snubbers. I am your host, Colin Connors. My wonderful co-host, Alicia Garza, is not with us tonight, but I'm joined by the super amazing Ben Millier. Hi, friends. The always amazing Elise from Canada. Hi. Friend of the podcast and uh, player from Survivor Cook Islands, the uh, super awesome Billy Garcia. Hey, hey, everybody. And our very special guest tonight, the queen of Survivor, two-time winners, winner, the one, the LA Sandra Diaz Twine. Woo! Woo! All right. <laughs> so we have a fair amount to talk about. This season this keeps getting more and more interesting, but I'm going to take this to the very, very beginning. And Sandra, actually, this is just an overall question for you. As I was watching this episode and I knew you were coming on, I just want to know your thoughts on Adam because I figured it would be very entertaining. And Adam's game, and you can talk about anything he's done so far. Like, what do you make of him as a player? Um, Adam, I think he's playing too hard, too fast. And he revealed information that he should have just kept to himself. Um, so that's what he gets. I didn't like what went down tonight because they lied on him, and they're not going to believe him. That's how Survivor is. Um, it's sad that they're going to – possibly say you know like yeah you ate you know like we're all hungry but you sat over there and ate like now they're watching it and they're sitting at home and they know that that's not true but i'm sure deep down inside the fact that he even knew that the kid was hiding that that taylor was hiding the food and these people are hungry that's not fair mm -hmm. and not only one jar three jars total like that's a lot mm -hmm. um Ooh. but i think adam is gonna go home if not next week, he's lucky. Well, I guess my question is, you: why do you think he's making these bad decisions? And you've had your own incident, incident in Survivor Pearl Islands where you threw out the fish and the blame got thrown on someone else, and everyone probably felt really guilty about that. As a player, like, you're not thinking about the viewers and all that stuff, right? And I guess where is Adam going to go from here is, is my thinking to you. Does he have a shot well, to see win? I mean, everybody has a shot to win. With me, it was different. I dumped out the fish because I didn't want anyone to eat it because Rupert had just gotten voted mm -hmm. off. I didn't expect Krista to take the blame. It just all fell, you know, like it just all happened so fast um, that I couldn't change the outcome. But at the same time, like I said, I just was going to get rid of the fish, but I tripped on some vines and it just landed and fell right <laughs> there and then they were coming to it. It wasn't like I could pick them up and put them back mm -hmm. in the bucket because I couldn't find them anymore. So that's how that all happened. Um, mm -hmm. Krista took the blame and I stayed quiet. But then I caught her saying, like, don't you want to get rid of Sandra instead of me? Don't you like me more than her? So it was kind of like, well, then now you deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's but with Adam, he doesn't have to say. He... he like he's doing too much and he he wasn't in anybody's sights like nobody was even worrying about him like yeah maybe he was on the outs um at the beginning but he's fine now so i feel like he's doing just too much he's doing too much and there's no need for it and now he's going to be in trouble because that loved one like if i won that visit me who never wins anything and if i won a loved one's visit and he took it from me and he didn't deserve it just because he had that advantage i'd be pissed off so he's gonna go home eventually over what was said today the lies that were said today about him or about the advantage they're gonna get rid of him people don't like for anyone to have an advantage or an idol so the minute you know someone has it they're gonna target you because then maybe it'll get played again, it'll get put out there, and maybe I have the chance to find it. So he's just screwed all around, I think. Oh, I mean, I kind of agree with you, but I want to ask you, as someone who has played with super aggressive players like Russell, what do you think is driving Adam's aggression? Because we don't see, like, this villain side with him. Is it the super fan taking over? What do you think is just driving him to make these horrible decisions? And also... Why don't you think he just played the reward at the la or his advantage at the last reward challenge? Because that could have nullified everything. A lot of times with the super fans, they want to do a lot and they want to do it fast. And, and they want to say, this is why I won, you know, because week after week, every three days, I was in control of the game. But then that's what messes him up. I can't tell you why he's doing what he's doing. He's very knowledgeable, that's for sure. But at the same time, I think there's things that he's doing that don't need to be done just yet. 
But mm -hmm. what? who am I to say? We only see a, a, a snippet of what's going on. We're not there hours a day, seven days a mm -hmm. week to realize what all we're not seeing on TV. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and I think um, that actually ties into another question I had about Adam, and me and you are going to talk a bit more about him before I jump to somebody else, which is we were shown this conversation between Adam and Jay, and Jay's confessional about it was, oh, Adam was being a pompous ass to me. When, when, when the part of the conversation we saw, it didn't seem like Adam was being that pompous at all. However, Jay went and told uh, Zeke and Hannah about it, and Zeke and Hannah's response were, oh, yeah, he's totally like that. So do you think Adam could have this arrogance or perceived arrogance that we're not seeing? Because that's what I took from that whole little tidbit. Or he just could have said it the wrong way in the wrong tone, and mm -hmm. it was misconstrued by this other guy. So Jay could have missed totally. Sometimes me being Hispanic, I say things, and I didn't mean it, and I offend someone. I'm like, damn, that's not what I, you know, I didn't mean for it to come out like that or that wasn't what i was trying to say you misunderstood mm -hmm. you took it the wrong way but that conversation wasn't that brief there's no telling they could have been out there for 45 mm -hmm. minutes all we saw was two seconds mm -hmm. and i saw it was interesting so that's that, why you i was gonna say i saw it was interesting that the editors chose to show us that little part where it didn't seem adam was being pompous but then just opposed that with jay saying that i thought that was a weird well decision i believe that adam adam portrayed in the things he says he does have some arrogance to him he knows the game he's there for, for the million dollars he doesn't anybody else but it's hard for me to say this is what he was thinking when he mm. said that or this is what he said because i wasn't there true very true all right so elise i want to talk with you real quick uh someone i've been focusing on a lot in these things is actually chris because chris had a couple really bad episodes in the beginning then he had mm. one episode of the good edit and then Tonight, it looks like next week he's starting to get a good edit. Is he going to be kind of an underdog going forward, or am I just projecting this Chris Will onto him? No, I do think he's had, like, a very interesting, like, overall arc. Uh, I know we saw, we didn't see that much of him tonight, just a little bit with the reward, but uh, I'm excited to see, like, you know sometimes the previews lie, but hopefully he'll get a good episode next week and – He's someone to watch out for. I don't really know where he's going to place because I haven't really seen that many edits like this before. So We'll see. And Billy and Ben, I want to talk to both of you about this. I actually took something crazy away from this episode, and maybe it's me being a super fan and being super aggressive like Sandra was saying. I actually feel like the underdogs are getting really good edits right now. I mean, tonight we got to see from Sunday. We got to see from Hannah. We got to see from Chris. Meanwhile, David and Ken – and Zeke, who are normally calling the shots, have actually been kind of quiet. Billy, what do you make of this? Is there going to be kind of a changing of the guard? Or is this tonight just, hey, it's a filler episode and everything's going to continue onwards? Uh, no, I think uh, what we're seeing is uh, uh, the Geek Squad is, is in power. Uh, of course, you know, it's, it's a little bit of a free-for-all because that's kind of what Survivor has set up. They don't, they're, they're tired of having it be one big group pick off a little group so they kind of set the game in motion in a certain way where where little groups can function all the uh, last season uh, uh voting blocks yeah, oh so, yeah voting uh, blocks not wonderful term blocks. yeah yeah Which i so actually would argue that sandra with her uh, as long as it ain't me strategy kind of was playing with voting blocks way before all the other stuff but that's just my humble opinion <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so ben, uh, ben, if you want to unmute yourself, what's your take on this whole the underdogs getting the good edit now? Or am I just projecting? I think that today was just a really well edited filler episode. It was a, it was like a setting the stage for the clusterfuck that is next week episode. Because going into next week's episode, we have the dynamic of Adam now being disclosed yeah. to being shady because he knew secrets and kept them from the rest of his alliance. You have Jay's idol that is now going to be known to the entire tribe. And you have next week episode edit that shows that the Gen Xers are going to implode. Mm -hmm. So you have three different lines that you can be hooked on in terms of stuff going on next episode. And that's a very fair point. And that's something we were going to talk about towards the end, which is the, uh, the million different uh, factions that seem to be brewing up and how this is all going to come together. And this is a giant concophony of just greatness. All right, Sandra, you played with Johnny Fairplay. Johnny Fairplay drank a lot of alcohol. You went. Uh, you were at the tribal council where he was drunk. Who do you think was better, drunk Johnny Fairplay or drunk Brett? 
Uh, I like uh, drunk um, Johnny Fair, but he's fun. <laughs> Johnny Fair, <laughs> he's funny. Well, Brett, I, the Brett we saw with the alcohol was just a kind of a like a notched up version of his personality, which his personality was just slightly bombastic, where Johnny Fairplay, you kind of never know what you get with him. Yeah, but well, he's I crazy, saw... period, but if Brett would have, like, told the truth while he was drunk that he was a police officer, then I I would have thought it was awesome, but, you know, he just says silly things and laughed a lot, like me. I get the church giggles when I drink, so, <laughs> I mean, but I didn't think that it, it was so great, you know? Mm. Um, what do you make of kind of Brett's chances overall in the game? And I, I don't know how much you like to like devolve into the editing aspects of it, but he's been getting just kind of like an okay, mediocre edit. Do you think he could surprise us all? Or do you think he's just going to be kind of trapped of Sunday, you know, at the hips and be booted three out four episodes from now? No, I think it, the, the, he'll, he'll stay the same simply because he's, all, he has to be careful about what he says because they already think he's a police officer and he's lying about a lot of times when you lie about just the simplest things um it's hard for the real you to come out eventually it does but he has to stick to this character of not being a police officer so he essentially has to watch everything he says and everything he does um he said a word today at tribal council culpable what what did he say like culpable, Billy. Yeah, like, yeah, culpable. yeah, like, yeah he's culpable. culpable. And, yeah. and that's such a a fuzz word, you know? I've never yeah. even heard of that word. Maybe it's a millennial. Maybe I'm a millennial, so I don't know what that word. What does that word mean? It means like... Oh, you go. <laughs> go yeah. ahead, you can say it. It's mean when, when you're a culpable, when you're... um. When you're, when you're guilty. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, guilty, okay. Yeah. I was yeah, going to say, it's don't definitely, have to the millennial tell me. Yeah. That will be embarrassing. Yeah, that is definitely it's definitely a law enforcement type jargon. So, well, he, yeah. Um, no, I, I'd say this, Sandra. I think you might agree with me that it is pretty much near, near impossible or or impossible to put on an act twenty four hours a day. Like I, I just don't see people believing Brett's lie just because they are around him twenty four hours a day. Yeah, he's going to slip up. He's going to he's going to tell a story and he's going to forget and he's going to and, and when you lie and you have to continuously keep lying, you forget what you lied about. You know, mm -hmm. only the truth always comes out right, but when you keep lying and lying and lying, you have to remember that line you have to fix the next line, mm -hmm. the next line. It's just too much. You just Well, and I was going to ask you, uh well, first a uh, quick aside. It was funny way back uh, about four episodes ago when Hannah was talking to Brett about his job and then Brett walked away and Hannah was like, I think he's a cop. And Hannah has not been shown to be the most perceptive girl. But Sandra, would you ever try to lie about something for all 39 days? And why the hell do people still do it after wa watching it fail, you know, 30 seasons in a row? I don't know why. Okay, I could see why he would not want to because a lot of times police officers or even military people they they get this rap or or this stigma that you know they can control like like for instance he's a cop so they're gonna think tony won tony was a cop tony played a certain way this guy's gonna play a certain way so you do think it's worth it though i don't think it's worth it because you have to continuously mm -hmm. keep on lying and remember what you lied about yeah. and then you have to make up these stories about what you do what was it that he said he does what what was it that he picked he picked something that runs a funeral home or something. Yeah, funeral home. <laughs> like the exact opposite of his thing. Yeah. Okay. So if every day, like if weeks go by and he doesn't talk about his job, then you would be like, so everyone else is always divulging information about what they do in this case and that case. And well, because I work with cases, sorry. You see how something's so simple? Yeah. You know, like I'm like, well, this case and that case, mm -hmm. and this is what we did today. But He's going to have to continue to keep up this lie. I don't think it's worth it because then they're not going to trust him because everything he said could have possibly been a lie. Yeah. And and I think, and this is my humble opinion, Sandra, I haven't even played the game. I would actually rather just day one say, I'm a super fan. I do a thing about Survivor. And then if they choose to vote me out early, they choose to vote me out early because eventually they're going to find out when they know that I know when the merge is and all that other stuff. So maybe it's just better to – take the hit in the first couple of days and then try to recover. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree with you 1000%. That's my thought. All right. <laughs>
And Billy, what about you? you? Know, so if you, I if I replace you guys know your stuff. A lot, a lot of times, you guys, we've actually played the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I agree with Sandra and, and yourself, Colin. Um, mm -hmm. I, I that's exactly what I did. I didn't lie about being a super fan, and mm -hmm. I didn't lie about being a marine, being a pro wrestler, being a musician. I just put it all out there, and you know, um, if if they're threatened by it. If they feel, and, and in case they, in my case, they were threatened by it. And, um, you know, if they, if they feel like they need to destroy themselves to, to take me out, then what are they really saying? They're saying they're not good enough to beat me head on. So exactly. I, it's, it's, it's you'll a, it's have a your pride. You'll be voted out early, but you'll have your pride. So, Sandra, I want to <laughs> throw a couple questions of, uh, at you about challenges. It seems to me, and maybe I'm just, you know, looking back in the past with rose colored glasses, that challenges, especially in Pearl Islands, were a lot harder than they were now. So do you think you could actually compete better in these challenges when they're much more just about like throwing the thing on the pole and doing the little puzzle and running under the ropes? Or am I just projecting? Because let's be clear, you weren't that good at challenges. You won the games you're, twice. In that you're challenge. projecting because a lot of times you go out there, first of all, you get a clue and you think you know what the challenge is going to mm -hmm. be and you don't. And you debate about who's going to sit out and why, and then you get out there and it's not what you think it is. And then it's broken down into segments where two people are going to do this, but three people are going to do that. And one person is going to put the puzzle together. And then you have all these different scenarios. So it's hard to pinpoint what a challenge is going to be like now that they're easier now than before. I don't think so. You I don't think, think so. It's about the same because on day one, you still, um, you know, you, you still have stuff in your body, so you've consumed things, so you're not starving. Whereas on day 20, the challenge is going to be hard no matter what it is mm -hmm. because you're hungry, you're starving, you're not sleeping the way you should. You know, it's just a lot of things that go into these challenges. So mm -hmm. the simplest challenge to you guys that looks simple on TV can take hours out there. Mm -hmm. And well, it I mean you. And that's the thing is, I call it carnival game challenges, which is where like uh, Survivor Caramel and I remember every single challenge had Rental throwing the ball and hitting some stuff. And then these ones are just like throwing the uh, things with the ropes on the uh, things. But that's a very, Whoa. yeah, I was going to say that's a very important point you're making, though, that if I haven't slept in five days, I would probably still be really, really bad at it. And you'd then be surprised <laughs> if you haven't slept in one day and been rained on for one day and been bug eaten for one day, just that one day of the worst day of your life is enough to, to make you like very, very incompetent at the simplest task. Mm -hmm. Something simple like just putting wood in fire becomes a chore. And very, and that's a very fair point. Walking uh, out to the challenges is a task. Getting there is a task. Everything is a task <laughs> before you even get out there and actually compete. And Sandra, I'm 100% believing you right now because your face while saying that this looked exhausted. Like my mom when talking about watching the kids all day, it's like, am I giving you like PTSD? I don't want to do that. I don't want to give you spine no, 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 no. Because, and then it's different too. I'm 42 now. When I first played, I was, gosh, I don't even remember. Was I like 29? Mm -hmm. That was a different Sandra. This Sandra is a tired Sandra. <laughs> uh, you know, if I suck then, imagine me now. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, I mean, these challenges, no matter, I mean, if it was all about being young, then why didn't Jay or Will or one of those guys beat out Ken today? You very know what I'm fair, saying? very fair point. Very um, fair. So they're always on an even keel, but it's always, it's this and that, and who's better at this? And if you put this tribe member here and people go to win. So they're great challenges because, you know, I mean, the fans love them, we love them, but they're not easy. Like, it's well, I remember, as easy as those two seconds you see on TV yeah. today. Way back, I Billy was the very the second Survivor player I ever interviewed, and Billy told me about how his challenge lasted like 30 minutes and how he caught on fire, and I was like, what? Oh, my gosh. It blew my mind. I mean, I've been to challenges where it was hours, you know? Um what was the toughest challenge you've ever been in from Pearl Islands and Heroes vs. Villains? What challenge do you think just completely destroyed you the most? First of all, I never pick a challenge because I hate them all. Anytime <laughs> going to a challenge, I I just hate it um, because I don't like to be put on the spot. Um, 
I don't know, like this fear overwhelms me, like, oh my God, am I going to suck? Like, I remember Krista and Burton one time telling me on the Pearl Islands, they were like, oh, when I picked the number one spot and I thought, okay, number one means that I just got to go from that little platform to the beach. But no, I ended up in the number one spot, the furthest out in the ocean. That's when I like hit my mouth on Mm -hmm. that one platform. Mm -hmm. Um, But Kristen Burton said that the minute they knew I was on their tribe, (laughs) they were going to lose. And that's what ended up happening. Like I was out there trying to untie this crate (laughs) and I was holding on. And of course I wasn't giving it slack. Like just everything I did was a mess. Um, So there's something about challenges that I love the game of survivor, but if they took away the challenges, I wouldn't be hurt by it. (laughs) <laughs> I feel like as a slightly pudgy super fan, I feel the same way. I'm like, if we could just play the actual social game of it. Um, I wanted to ask you something, uh, another thing, Sandra, and I am going to throw this to the other panelists as well, which is that we're Sunday this episode had a kind of a breakthrough, I guess, so to say, in the fact that we actually got confessionals from her. But her big thing was talking about how she needed to make a move and build a resume. How much of that is actually necessary to build win the game of survivor to build your resume because i remember in heroes versus villains at the final tribal council you famously were like i didn't vote out russell because i could beat him i didn't need to make these you know i made big moves but i didn't need to make so many of them because the game was already falling into place is this a new post postmodern thing of survivor where everyone has to have a huge resume or am i underselling kind of your lies lazy fair gameplay type what do you what do you think of that I feel like now they go out there and everyone wants to make like this big move that's going to make them win. Like when you watch Big Brother 2, they're always like, you have to make a move or you won't win. So these people want to start making moves like really, really early when there's no need. Mm -hmm. They put targets on their backs when there's no need. If they're already, if the majority of the people are after one person, why make waves? Relax. As long as it's not you. It, next week or the next week or the next week, you know, um, but a lot of times they want to make big moves really, really quick. And a lot of times they're impressing people that are not even going to be on the jury. That And that's so a very, no very, very, very point. Very, very point. Yeah. So, um, I've actually always thought the same way. Why blindside like seven people uh, episode one when none of them are going to vote for you for the million dollars? Exactly. But I mean, I don't know what Sunday's plan is. I really like sometimes when you guys talk, I have to actually pull up the cast because there's only two or three people, which means I know everyone else is like a blur. Um, it's just too many survivors, you know. Um, well, and this thing is, we are really so far into this. Like- We're on episode nine, I think, and there's still like 11 left, which is a lot. Billy, you wanted to comment, and then I was going to jump to Elise. No, I was just going to echo what Sandra was saying. Jeff Barner comes to mind. When I, when uh, she mentioned people playing so hard so early, and everybody under a couple a couple of rounds of elimination, and uh, it just reminds me of Jeff Varner. Yeah, he was entertaining while he was mm-hmm. in it, but man, if he wouldn't have played so hard so early. Yeah, he could have won, and I love Jeff Varner. Jeff Varner was the first survivor I ever fell in love with when I like watched the show. At least you wanted to comment as well. Yeah, I feel like the show itself is now trying to build this big thing where, like, oh, you have to b- make big moves to make- get to the end and win. You have to do this because it's, like, very camera-friendly. When really, when you're in the game, I feel like the players should be focusing on, A, how do I get to the end, and B, how do I get to the end with the best position possible? That may not need big moves. Mm-hmm. But I feel like people get distracted by that because it's on TV productions. Like, you need to do this. Like, Jeff's out there. Like, you have to make a big move and, to win. And I'm glad you said that because I was going to throw that to Sandra and then Billy. <laughs> Sandra, we know that producers do talk to you guys during your confessionals and there's a back and forth. Is there this push to go, like, what if you voted out this person? What if you voted out that person? Can you tell me about that? Is there, like, do they try to even get that kind of conversations going? I can't speak for anyone else because I'm sure there's other people that have said certain things. Um, Mm -hmm. For me, I'm just, when I talk to the producers, I pretty much just talk about what's going on. What are my thoughts in my head? You know, they'll say, well, who do you like? Who don't you like and why? Or if there was an altercation, you know, like a beef, Mm -hmm. like explain what happened and you give your side of the story. But I can personally say by my experience that no one has ever 
told me like do this do that write yeah. this person's name down do, well, you know i've never encountered anything like that by production but they do ask you questions though right like how do you feel about so and so and what would it make sense to vote out so and so and i could be completely off base with that no they could say to me how do you feel about billy oh i mm -hmm. love billy how do you feel about jeff varner i love jeff varner okay so who don't you like um I'm you like colin <laughs> Like, well, what happened? You know, okay, like something like that. But well, something I yeah, noticed. yeah. I, I, Go ahead, Billy. I'll say what else. I thought about having been on there. Um, nobody's ever told me like who to vote for or who, or, or or who who should I not like or none of that stuff. Yeah. Like they don't. They do ask. Oh, you're breaking up a little bit. Was he breaking up for anybody else? Yeah. Okay, we barely, we currently lost you. When you come back, we will continue that thought. Oh my God, uh, Sandra, your dog. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, okay, so. That, take a moment that's what I for. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, okay. how about now? Okay, Billy is back. All right, so you're saying the producers never right. counted directly. And something I just want to say as someone who's talked to probably 40 Survivor players, the Survivor players that seem to have not been edited so fairly, in which, and I think a bad edit comes from your own reactions, are, seems to be the ones that complain the most. That's just something I've noticed about uh, levels of interference. And especially the longer the times pass, the more Survivors more likely to be like, yeah, it was a fair experience, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, it was, you know, it's a fair game. What they do is they ask you a question, and then you do, you're, you're supposed to have the question you know, places on camera, and it, and you don't necessarily have to answer the question. Mm -hmm. I've been asked questions where I gave, you know, I basically gave them the information I wanted them to have, not necessarily the question that they were asking, you know, you don't have to. And, and that's a very fair point, Sandra, did you ever do that? Because we remember uh, Survivor Guatemala, Danny Boatwright, famously didn't give that many confessionals because she thought they were trying to rig the game for Stephanie. So Danny Boat was just like, I'm not telling these producers shit about my gameplay. Did you ever strategically not give out info? And also I want to know is how far away actually are you from the beach? Because the last thing I want to do with my loud mouth is say something really important and have Joe Smo, who's just collecting crabs, hear me. No, whenever you're doing an interview, the area where you're at is going to be off limits. Okay, okay. But I mean, like, even like... And no, and, and I'll go, and then when I'm done, it'll be like, tell Billy to come, or they'll come and be like, Billy, you're next. And with my confessionals, I'm briefing to the point. Mm -hmm. I don't sit there for hours. I will take an hour, and I'll be like, what will he be saying? I mean, nothing <laughs> that he says is even interesting here, much less what the fuck would he be saying <laughs> But a lot of people <laughs> like to toot their own horns and they just talk and talk and talk. Me, I'm hungry, I'm tired, I'm hot. What do you want to know? I'm going <laughs> to answer and I'm going to be done. Do you, well, you see what I'm saying? I'm, oh, I'm, yeah. And I can compare that to uh, Tony from Survivor, uh, Kagian. He said that during his, when they were filming his confessionals, they would just say, Tony, sit on the beach, and they would roll the camera not say anything to them and then three hours later they'd be like okay you can go back wow <laughs> so that's just like a comparison of everything and then famously rick from survivor south pacific they knew they wouldn't use anything he said so they didn't even actually uh save the uh sd card in their cameras wow rick, all... rick you said who rick from survivor south pacific he got fifth place exactly he only had about five confessionals that whole season and the producers, uh, or the cameramen knew they wouldn't use anything they said, so they didn't like properly format the SD cards in their cameras. I'm gonna look that up, Rick from Survivor. <laughs> What's his last name? Because I have no idea who that is. Isn't it Wilson? Uh, I don't know. There's there's like three players that made it deep into the game and had less sound bites than I did. Uh, oh, he number had, one is he Cassandra had a from Fiji. Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a cowboy hat. Yeah, yeah. Cassandra from Fiji, who played the season after me. Made it to the final three, and I had more sound, more confessionals than she did. And is that a point of pride? It? Yeah, it is because she was that bad. <laughs> Billy, who? Cassandra from Survivor Fiji. She made it to the final three. That was the year that Earl won, the season that Earl won. She sat with Dreams and Earl at the end, but she was yeah. so you know she was so 
what's the word I'm looking for? I know for? what you're talking about. Yeah. I just pulled her up. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. She, only, she had less confessionals than I did. So um, <laughs> what I want to do next is I'm going to ask Elise and Ben a question, and then I'm actually going to compare it to what the actual people who have played Survivor said. Because Ooh. I know my answer to this, but I'm pretty sure uh, it's different. So Elise, I'm at an immunity challenge. I know I can't win, but they offer food. Clearly, as a super fan, I have to participate in that challenge, right? Like, because me and you, we always talk shit about people that sit out and eat the food, right? There's no reason to eat the food. I think it depends on the situation, but I think you, the worst part, like, even if you think you're not going to win, is if people are going to look at you badly for sitting out and eating food. That's the worst possible scenario. It depends how you, how you are with your alliance, what's going on. If you're on the outs and you know you're not gonna win the challenge, like hell, eat. I don't care. But well, when I think it's very important to like, try anyway. But when I'm armchair quarterback and survivor, I'm like social stigma. If I eat the hamburgers and get voted out, no one will ever forgive me. Ben, how do you feel about that? See, I was I'm on the same wavelength as Elise because like when I was watching episode, I'm like, why is he like? You have to be a number for their like. Like, you have to be a number for your alliance to make sure that the minority doesn't win. With Will, I'm like, yes, you're doing the smart thing because you don't have a batch of chance in hell of winning. So fill up your stomach while you have the opportunity. So I think it's very situational based off of whether you're in the majority, whether or not you're in contention to be voted out, or whether or not you're in the minority but know that, like, there's but, no But you, you would say there's a bit of a social stigma, like when we watch it, saying I couldn't, give up the, I couldn't eat the food. I, that's how mm -hmm. I feel personally. Not necessarily. Like, when I saw that Will didn't take it, like, didn't participate in the challenge, I was like, that was the right move for him because he was not going to win. So fill your stomach and drink your illegal beer. <laughs> so, Sandra, when you're out there and you get offered the chance to sit out of this challenge, eat food, all that stuff, or take your hand down and get the candy, are you thinking at all about how uh, your family at home is going to view that? Or are you just like, hey, I'm hungry? I don't give a damn how anybody views it. <laughs> you put, first of all, you know I hate challenges. So if he says, eat while someone else plays, I'm going to eat even if I'm in the bottom, even if I think I'm going home. Then I'm going to turn around and tell everybody, yeah, you know, or I know for a fact I'm not going home. You know, if you don't know me to be in your alliance, maybe you're the one in trouble, you mm -hmm. know, and then they're sitting there like, oh, damn, like, what? You know, maybe she knows something I don't know, you know? Yeah. I'd play him, but... I would not participate. I would eat my ass off. <laughs> I sure would. All right, and then Billy. And I don't care. So with stigma. Like <laughs> you know what? For me, it would depend if if my alliance is is relying on me to help play keep away with the with the uh, immunity. Um, then I would have to play because they're relying on me. But if they're not relying on me, and I'm in the you know, and I'm in the big group, uh, you know. I'll be honest with you, man. Fat asses like food, man. <laughs> very fair, very fair. Um, and so if you look at your competition and there's five or six people that definitely could outperform you, yeah. why even bother to sit up there for 10 minutes and lose out on a grilled cheese sandwich? Very yeah. fair. I, and, and that's the thing is I tell myself I would do the challenge because of the social stigma, but y'all are making me think I should just eat the food anyways. See, I would eat the food if I thought I had no chance at that challenge, but I might have a chance at the next challenge, mm -hmm. and that food can make a difference. Yeah, for all we know, there's a Survivor Trivia Challenge. They haven't done one of those since Survivor All-Stars, but maybe they should do that again if I ever play. That'd be a great immunity challenge. So, Sandra, I was going to jump to you real quick. What I wanted to ask you was, we saw Adam playing aggressively and kind of playing both sides. How does that contrast to how you would play in which you wouldn't mind you know forming alliances with people i mean you famously kind of worked with russell russell to vote out coach in order to save courtney um what's the difference can you like put your thumb on it or do you not have enough information what do you think that cardinal difference is like how, why can you play both sides successfully and so many other people can't because for me, at the end of the day, I put myself first no matter what. Like, we could be friends out there. Me and you could become best mm -hmm. buds overnight. But at the end of the day, I have to play for me and for my family. So you have to be able to separate. Um, and like like I always said, as long as it's not me, I don't give a damn who goes home. Mm -hmm. You know, we can, we can be friends two, three years from now if that's how long it takes for you to heal. Mm -hmm. um, 
But with me, pretty much, I try to go, I try to roll with the punches. I try to go with the majority. I try to um, follow a certain path. Um, when coach went home, that was different. That was like, because he regretted, uh, sending, uh, um, he regretted that Boston Rob went mm -hmm. home and he voiced his opinion and Russell didn't like what he said. And so then coach ended up going home. Um, but a lot of times too, it's not what you guys, the reasons you guys think it is, you know, mm -hmm. I think, did they do secret scenes like they do them now? Yeah. They had a couple of secret <laughs> scenes, but a lot of times it's, it's, more in depth it, it there's more to the story than what you guys see mm -hmm. you don't have enough time to see the two days of arguments and fighting and going back and forth you know um so there's a lot of stuff and for me i didn't give a damn about coach anyway like <laughs> it's it time for him to go so you know you're gonna give me coach on a platter then coach could go home you know okay fair. well and i guess this is kind of a weird question to ask you though but i feel like your social game has to be pretty damn on par to constantly get people to work with you and, you know, you to kind of blend in with the different groups. Do you think that's maybe because, honestly, for lack of a better way, you're a mom and you can be caring and nurturing, which a lot of people don't have? Is that a side to you we don't see? Because we only see you explode. What are you doing the rest of the day? Like, how are you bonding with these people? You know what? I always find something in common with everyone. There, you know, sometimes people are like, uh, for instance, and, and I hate to bring up Russell, but he would say like, um, you know, nobody can stand her, but actually I want to think everybody pretty much for the most part mm -hmm. does like me or I'm not someone that's horrible to be around. There's people that you're out there with and you're like, damn, this fucker's still out here. Like, <laughs> oh my God. so what are we doing wrong? Um, but I think I'm a pleasant person. Billy, Billy loves me. I love Billy. We've been friends for years, you know? Ten years. Like I have a crew that like I think I pretty much get along with everybody. Mm -hmm. I'm an open book. I'm approachable. Um, I give you the benefit of the doubt. I try to find things in common with you. I'm gonna do it something I do it. Um I don't know. I think I'm for you, for me to 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 be mad and and blow up, like it's got to be extreme. Like mm -hmm. it's got to be something that that you know. But for the most part, I'm. I could be nasty if I need to be nasty. Yeah. I could be your best friend, or I could be your worst enemy. Like, but I'm gonna give you a chance to be my friend before you become my enemy, because then you're not gonna like me. And and that's the thing is that's what I like to talk with Survivor players about, which are these moments we don't see on camera because, like you said, that's actually where the game is decided. They can only show so much in that kind of, uh, you know, three-day period. They get 45 minutes or 43 minutes, really, to tell the story of it. So we are going to transition a little bit back to this current episode. So, Elise, uh, Taylor, didn't you, like, love him or something? Why was he, why was he so bad at this game? What was going on? I didn't on? love Taylor. Oh, okay. <laughs> so that's the word, sir, for what you didn't love. What do you think, though, was – why was he – not able to play the game. Are we going to find out he was a recruit? What do you think his major malfunction was, for lack of a better word? Because let's be clear, eating the food was really dumb. Being open about it was really dumb. And he could have at least tried to connect with Jessica and Ken because we saw that Jessica and Ken talked to him three episodes ago. Why wasn't he able to, like, fully conceptualize and strategize? I just don't think he's that kind of person or player. I think he isn't like a big game bot like maybe we would be like we've watched every episode we or even have like good survivor instincts i think he was just like hey food i'm gonna hide it it's gonna be hilarious i don't think he was really thinking that hard about the game ultimately. well and then ben i'm gonna throw this to you um something i've noticed is that pretty people sometimes have a really hard time in survivor because they've never really been told like no it's kind of like when you uh, like Matt Quinlan in Survivor One World, you have these people that are like, oh, I'm a really successful lawyer, I'm a really successful doctor. Well, yeah, because everyone you're around with all day answers to you, and then when you get out to the island, you no longer have that power. Pretty people and super rich professionals, I guess, maybe don't make good Survivor players, or is this just another crazy Colin extrapolation? Yeah, I'm gonna go with crazy Colin extrapolation on that one. <laughs> yeah. So, like, you can't paint a wide brush like that, like, you have well, well, lawyers never want survivor. What? A lawyer's never one survivor, and a lot of them have played. Yes, neither has a garbage person or like. <laughs> but not a lot of like, garbage people have played. Like, that's that's like the wrong person hasn't played. That's a lawyer. Yeah. 
I'm just saying. I, like to me, it's like it's the based off of the person in general, and if they have the ability to know the game, know how to play the game, and know how to play it in the correct pace. Yeah. Because you have people who come on that are super fans that play too hard, or you have people who are not just just not equipped to play the game, like don't know the game, and then there are just people that are stupid as fuck. <laughs> You can take a guess of which of the three Taylor falls into. Okay, so we're just going to – and and I want to – when I do this, I like to do deep analysis, but sometimes, you know, Freud said a cigar is just a cigar. I think Taylor's just a Taylor. Um, I am going to say this, though. An attorney or a lawyer will never, ever win Survivor. I will bet money on that right now. Who wants to take that bet? Four dollars. So you're not Four saying that Jessica is going to win. Okay. Sandra's, me and Sandra have the bet. An attorney and a lawyer will never, ever win Survivor. And <laughs> – Unless I become a lawyer and I play, obviously. And you said four dollars, right? Four dollars. I agree. Well, I agree with you. An attorney will never win. But I want to say something else about Taylor, like you guys said. I don't think he knows okay. zip about Survivor. There's no way that he could have known about Survivor and then went out there and not only stashed away one canister of food, but three, and then was making all kinds of racket in the middle of the night when he was doing it too. Just the way just everything about him, um, his his romance with um, Figgy, Figgy or whatever you want to call that, he doesn't know Survivor. He he didn't go out there to for the million dollars. Like he went out there to waste time. That's what he you know. It was just a waste of time for him to go out there. He wasn't invested in the game. I don't think he was. And I and well, I think go ahead, Billy. I was just gonna say, Sandra. Uh, I, let me let me ask you this. You think it's not just that he doesn't know Survivor, but that he doesn't know life as well. Like he hasn't learned all the life lessons you would need to like not make these sort of mistakes around people you just met. Well, Billy, I'm sure he's watching his his episodes and seeing how dumb and stupid he he comes off. Like so. Um, well, and, and young people suck at Survivor. Like he's. I doubt we'll be seeing him at any charity events. Like people are gonna <laughs> on Survivor sucks. They're just gonna tear him up. Yeah. Well, and yeah. that's the thing is, you know, young because people. So many people out there that would like the opportunity to play the game, and then they put this clown on there, and this is what he does. No. Well, that's what on. I'm saying. Yeah, they put him on because he was beautiful. But I think young people are inherently bad at Survivor. Yes, we have Fabio, but that's one out of you know Todd. 30, Todd. 30. Oh, Todd. Todd. Very, very good point. But I would argue Todd had a lot of success, though, because he probably did have to develop social skills early on. Like, you know, he was more emotionally mature for his age than other people. I think it depends on the person. I think mm -hmm. there may be, like, a correlation where if you have more life experience, you're more likely to do well. But I don't think it's necessarily all young people are going to do awful at Survivor. Well, yeah, because I'm going to win. But I'll be, like, 28, though, so it won't, it won't matter <laughs> by the time I finally play. <laughs> all right. So does That's anyone want to... Uh, I was gonna say, Ben, do you want to comment real quick? Because we were going to talk about Tails' other half, which is Jay, who I've been telling everybody this whole time: watch Jay. Jay could make big moves. And after this episode, I think Jay is actually dead in the dust. Not because he won't have options moving forward, but I think he actually lacks the uh, intelligence to successfully maneuver himself to the final three. And Ben, I'll start with you, and then we can move along down the yeah. line. I was just gonna say, I don't like that you're painting a wide brush in terms of. Winners not being young, considering there are plenty of young win winners. Well, it depends um, on how you define young, but a, an attorney will never win. I will say that. They're <laughs> um, <laughs> just making all these accusations today, Colin. It's what I like to do, though. I don't like these accusations, Colin. It gets conversations um, going, which is my job. In terms of Jay, he's interesting because I feel like even though he was like he was spotlighted this episode as being someone that like was about to be voted out. He was able to be edited in a way that makes me see that he could have long-term potential. Like, unlike Taylor, it came out that Jay has been a Survivor follower for a long time. So he's, he may be a recruit, but he has knowledge of the game. He has the idol, and he didn't impulsively play it this round when he could have very easily, which shows self-restraint. So I feel like it's... If things go down, like the edit is showing, it's going to go down next episode. He could slither a couple rounds down the line. Well, and that's what I think. Things are going to like snowball if it turns into a new tribal dynamic with the Gen Xers. 
Well, that's what I said. I think I could see him making seventh place, but I don't see how he has the intelligence to move forward because I've been saying since the beginning, watch Jay, watch Jay because of his edit. But I really do think there's a lack of intelligence in his edit too. Like he's shown as someone that can play the game, but maybe not play it well. And then Sandra, I want to hear your thoughts and I want to jump to Billy about Jay. If you remember who Jay is, because I know he's one of the people that's I slightly low. <laughs> he's lower than the, you know. No, Jay, Jay has everything to gain and nothing to lose right about now. And I think he will slither, because you said slither. He will slither to the end. I think that he has the potential. Him and Will, out of all those young guys, they have the potential to make it far, and Ken has the potential to make it far. I think, I want to say Jay, Jay's going to be in for what we have. Who said we had 11 episodes to go? Uh, no, I said we're on 11 players. 11 oh, yeah, players. 11, 11 anyway, players. I yeah. think he'll be final four. Sandra, I will bet you. Okay, another bet. Four dollars. He's all five <laughs> final seven. Four dollars. I get money four dollars if he lands between fifth and seventh. I'll, I'll make that bet. I'll all right. Bet you four dollars <laughs> that he'll 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 go he'll do better than final seven. All right. I'm making a note of this, and I need to stop because I only have about twelve dollars in my bank account, so I only have enough for <laughs> one can more I bet. Final bet then. <laughs> ben, uh, you maybe you can make one dollar a month. <laughs> yeah, I'll give you one dollar a month. Yeah. We're financing you at twenty-five cents. <laughs> yeah, financing you at twenty-five cents. All right. So, Elise, real quick, I want to talk about who obviously the star was this episode. She absolutely killed everything. She's gonna win. And Hannah, she got confessionals. I have a, oh Sandra, I have a giant crush on Hannah, so I always project all this greatness onto her. Does Hannah have a shot yet? Because she's getting confessionals. Maybe something happens. Maybe. I I don't really know if she's getting the longevity edit. She's getting like that cute, like, I'm so excited to be playing Survivor, but that doesn't really mean you're going to win. Like, good for her. Will. I'm glad she's having a good experience, but I, I really don't see her as the winner of this season. Well, and then, Sandra, what I was going to ask you about Hannah is that she seems like her quirkiness might actually kind of piss you off. But after talking to you, I'm like, you would just find a way to come and, you know, use common ground and say, hey, these challenges make me anxious, too. So is that how you would approach someone like Hannah? Because you wouldn't vote her out because obviously she's amazing and beautiful. She might have a great personality, but there's uh, – and I like Hannah. Um, <laughs> I don't know that – You Feel free. <laughs> No, 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 open... no, no. I mean, Hannah. Hannah likes me. She's she's a fan of the show. She's mm -hmm. a fan of Sandra. I like Hannah, but it's not like Hannah would be a person that I would gravitate to. Um, she she. It's hard for her to make up her mind. Then she she wants to questions like question you. Like last week when they were telling her, "Hey, do this, do this, do that," and she's like, "But why? But why?" Like, no, no, no. You know, if you tell me. At the last minute, everybody's voting a certain way. I don't want to be that oddball. I w I'm glad somebody came and brought me some information. I just think that, and then when she writes the name down, it took her, it seemed like it took her like forever to decide at Tribal Council who she was going to vote for. So in essence, that makes me wary that she's not a person that's always going to be on board with what I think or with what the majority of my group, my alliance thinks is the best move. You know, if she's somebody we would bring in to our alliance. So when would you cut her, though? Would you like get rid of her immediately or would you like or would you just keep your eyes on her and try to get her when you could? I'm not worried about her right now. You know who who I think they need to get rid of? Um, mm. Gosh, I forget his name. The real skinny one that at the beginning was having, like, the one that's scared of everything. What's David. His name? Brian? David. 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 Oh, yeah, we got to talk about David because, like I said earlier, David was one of those people who got a lot of confessionals early on in the season. Then this episode comes, he doesn't get that much screen time. Is this because David, you know, he might – be getting eliminated soon or is this was just as a filler episode so what would make you not like david i mean i think we all know but i want to hear you articulate it well the way david was from the beginning like it, it um his paranoia like i think he has an idol like what dude this is like minute one no one has an idol you know just <laughs> things of that nature that make him a paranoid player i would definitely stay away from him i would stay away from um, Hannah, I would stay away from Adam. Like, there's certain players that I think are going to go home soon. Even the one, the, the, hold on, I got to go back to the cast. 
the female that was quiet today, not not Sunday, the other one. Jennifer? Jennifer? Yes. Jessica. 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 I'm so yeah. sorry. Gosh, I'm killing these names. <laughs> and I do it's okay. want to just remember their names. Um, Sandra, I'm curious Jessica. about what you feel about Z. Because, like, oh, yeah. You, we, let's like, actually talk about Z. But, like, you didn't call him out. So is there something different about how he is being presented or playing? Well, I like Zeke. I like the way Zeke is playing. I liked his, at the beginning, when it seemed like he was the tribe leader. Um, he has good confessionals. He's aware of his surroundings. He knows what's going on. He's easy to talk to. Um, Zeke seems like the person that everybody wants to go and tell the truth to, like the like the preacher, like the 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 pope. You know, everybody wants to tell him everything. Um, so he he's in a good spot. I don't see anything wrong with Zeke. Um, well, or or the the redhead attorney. Chris. Chris. Yeah. Chris. Like, like, like within his group, go to him too, you know? Um, we talked about know, that. I think you were after something else when you asked yeah. me about Zeke. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. See, oh, my yeah. problem with Zeke, my problem with Zeke yeah. is he's so likable that as you get later in the game, like get towards the end, you, you would have to say he has to go because he's too likable. And then that's something yeah, I was going to say. Yeah, but they I feel don't like see Zeke, that right now. They don't see yeah, that right, right now. now. They see yeah. him as an ally, as someone they can talk to, um, someone they can find common ground with. Zeke knows the game, so he's level-headed. He's not flying off the handle. I mean, yeah, he was mad at Hannah because mm -hmm. she did him dirty, and then she wanted to apologize. He wasn't trying to hear it right then <laughs> and there. You know, like... Classic Hannah. <laughs> well, and and... I guess the only thing is, Sandra, if you're someone like Zeke and you know around Final Five, everyone's going to turn and look and be like, I need to get him the fuck out. What can you do to save yourself? Is it to have a J right next to you being like, hey, if you don't get him out, he'll win the immunity? Would that be his correct strategy to have a J or a Ken, really? Someone that you know everyone's going to is going to be a bigger shield than you? When they get to Final Five, these people are already looking at what their competition is. Mm -hmm. You know, so they already know this and they just got to be able to talk to each other and say, hey, we need to get Zeke out of here because everybody likes him. Like, if I'm in the jury, I'm going to vote for Zeke. So mm -hmm. get him out and so, don't put me on the jury because you know who I'm voting for, yeah. you know, something to that effect. That's very fair. So you're saying Zeke kind of doesn't really have that much of a play past Final Five besides maybe winning immunity or maybe the edit, hopefully, like, or maybe he could piss someone off in a way. You know what happens that when you're down to final five, you're already thinking about how do I get to the final four? You know, mm -hmm. where are these three within these, you, within this five, who's top three? That's what you need to get to. So if Zeke was one of those people there, then you want to hurry up and get rid of him. But by then you're talking to everyone and seeing what is the best play to get a specific, a specific three moving forward. Because even if you promised me final four, I want to know within these four, who are the top three? Mm -hmm. You know, I'm looking past that. So within these five, who are the top three so I can move forward with them? Well, and this is something I've always wanted to actually ask someone like you. You've been in multiple final twos, final, or final threes, final four, final five. When you get to final five, final four, everyone, I guess, I'm assuming is a much, it was a giant open book about, hey, I'm willing to work with you on stuff. Because by the, that end, everyone's just looking to get ahead just one more week. So I'm assuming around four and five, it's actually easier to create and get rid of alliances because anyone just wants to do anything to keep them safe. Would you say that's that, true? That's exactly how it works. Look, like Lil said to me, Sandra, it's me and you. Fair play saying, Sandra, it's me and you. So I'm like, oh, damn, I'm not going to root for neither one of them at the challenge because no matter what, I'm going to the mm -hmm. final two. But I'll take the I feel like everyone's final. saying that. Yeah, I feel like everyone's saying that to everyone, though, in round final four, final five, just doing whatever they can to save themselves. No, well, back then it was just when it was me, yeah. Lil, and Johnny Fairplay. Now it was final two. Back then it was final mm -hmm. two. Then when it was final four with Russell, me, Poverty, and Jerry, um, Jerry's telling me, Sandra, it's me and you, me, you, and Russell. Russell's telling me, it's me, you, and Poverty. Poverty's telling me, it's me, you, and Poverty. I mean, Russell. So I'm like, oh, shit, here we go again. You're like, I'm about to win again. I don't again. have to say anything to anybody because I'm golden. Mm -hmm. No matter what, I'm good to go. So when you get to these positions where you want to move forward, a lot of times 
it's plain to see it's the writing on the wall you know one person's out and the other ones will move forward together and that's it um real quick and this is a random question i have for you heroes versus villains finale you said you thought parvati was winning. was that true that you actually went into the finale thinking that you weren't going to win when jeff was reading the votes yeah because at the final tribal council um like coach for one was like Oh, Parvati, you know, we were going after you since episode one, which was true. Minute one on the beach, they wanted Parvati gone. Um, and and look, we, you went from being the first target to making it all the way to the end. And along the way, you picked up all these immunities um, mm. that she won herself. He wasn't saying that about me. He never <laughs> once gave me one compliment, mm -hmm. you know? So a lot of times when they ignore you or don't give you questions or... The only one I knew was going to vote for me was Courtney. Mm -hmm. I knew I had Courtney's vote. That was the only for sure vote I knew I had. Um, and then listening to Colby and other people that love these dominant physical players, you're like, oh, man, she got it. Yep. So when I left that tribal council, I was like, she's got five and I got four. That was it. Mm -hmm. She thought she won, too. Well, and at least she was um, – she didn't look that shocked because there's been instances like, for instance um, – Survivor, Amazon, or I'm sorry, Survivor, Exile Island, Danielle thought she won against Aris, and Danielle was kind of sad. And then famously, I don't know how much you follow like Survivor culture, Survivor Philippines, everyone thought Mike Scoopin won. And when Mike Scoopin didn't win against Denise, his face was just like, so quick little, uh, <laughs> just a fun little aside of that. So real quick, at least I'm throwing this to you because I've been doing this this entire season. We'll watch. Once again, Will did sit out of this challenge, and for the people listening and watching this, Will set out of almost every single tribe challenge throughout the entire season, and then once again, he set out of this week's immunity challenge. I'm just putting that out there so it's on the record when Will says, you know, a month from now, hey, I set out all of these challenges on purpose. Everyone can go, Colin called it first. Okay, so I'm throwing that out of the way. Sandra, uh, Billy was telling us pre-show that you and him got would get into some shenanigans at these re reality rallies and that are these uh reality tv show rallies and that you two are kind of the bad kids the kids in the back of the bus the bad kids is there any truth to this no oh, the cool kids sit in the back yes it's true we're okay. the cool kids we're the cool kids yeah, and, cool and kids. my phone is at six percent so my phone is gonna die soon but okay. yes we're the cool kids and we're the cool, the cool kids. kids sit in the back all right so, but do you have any juicy gossip? Anything fun that we you think we would like to hear? No, Billy. Do I have juicy gossip? Or, or just about like a, a fun story about the uh, rallies, like the time you guys like both beat the shit out of like Johnny Fairplay or something. Nah, <laughs> we didn't do that, buddy. Yeah, no. But you uh, know what? I. Go ahead. Way I always like I start at the bar and I say hi. Then I say I gotta go talk to my husband real quick. I'll be right back. And I go to bed and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's real though. Right, Billy. I'm 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 chill. Like I'm really like I always say hello to everyone. I try to take my time and spend a couple of minutes here and there and give everybody love. Um, but yeah, no, we, no we, gossip because I always leave the parties early. Like I'm just like that. Well, and I mean, to be honest, you don't need to gossip. You won twice. You're the queen of Survivor. Like, what are they gonna say about you? I don't know. No, I they could say that I'm. I don't know, Billy. What do people say about me? <laughs> <laughs> this is getting. This is getting. No, no, no that, 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 <laughs> your reputation as the, is that you're very honest. That you're uh, whatever's on your mind, you're gonna you're gonna say. And uh, I would say my, my story of us is uh, how I'm always at the bar, like slamming down pina colada after pina colada. And uh, uh, you, you, you'll look at me and you'll come over and you'll be like, I'm hungry. And that, that's it. <laughs> that, that's it. That, that means we're making, we're making, you know, we're the ones that, that decide like, all right, the group is now going to eat. <laughs> well, that's a very important position to be in. And Sandra, normally we're not this gossipy, but I've actually, uh, I figured while I were here, while we have you, might as well grill you with as many questions as uh, you possibly can. So real quick, before you leave, uh, before we let you go, who do you think is going to win? Just do you have like a winner pick for this season? Do you have someone that you think is just like stunning and amazing and is going to carry this thing home? Because it seems to us everyone's being edited pretty fairly and we're seeing their flaws. But what's standing out to you? Can I pick two? Go ahead. That's fine. Ken. Mm-hmm. Hey, that's or my Jay. pick. 
Ken or J- – yeah. ooh, she's throwing the J wow. out there. I will say wow. if Jay does win, then – Episode four, Colin, is very vindicated because episode four, Colin was saying Jay stood a much better chance. And now this episode, I'm saying he's going to be out at seventh, and I have a bet with you about it. So either way, I'm going to eat some crow. Uh, So, Sandra, I do want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I understand you probably have to go because your phone's dying. We're going to wrap things up real quick. So, Elise, Billy, Ben, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you would like to cover? Anything, any final thoughts? Thank you, Sandra, so much for joining yeah. us tonight. I it was like... my pleasure. It was overdue. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. As a matter of fact, I have a quick story. Okay. I had to go to my mother-in-law's just to watch Survivor so I could come and do the interview. But she, go- <laughs> she lives only four houses down yeah. from my street. Mm-hmm. They're doing some work, and for some reason, they cut out my my. I couldn't get the channel, so I, I was like calling my mother-in-law because she has Direct TV. So I was like. Hey, well, I gotta come over there because I gotta do an interview and I gotta know what the hell I'm talking about. I had to go to my mother and to run over here because when I say I'm gonna do something, I do it. And yeah, I know it. the other, the last time I couldn't do it, um, what was it that I was doing? Billy knows I'm good about when I, I, I keep my word. If I say uh, I'm gonna do something, I for do sure. it. For and sure. real quick, Sandra, I don't know if you know this, I actually live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I'm from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. So stones throw away, we're in the same little part. Okay, well, I'm in Fayetteville now for Thanksgiving. I'll be here through Thanksgiving, but then I'll go back to Georgia because I'm in Augusta, Georgia. My husband is stationed in Fort um, Gordon. So I'm only here for Thanksgiving and to put up my Christmas tree. (laughs) Oh, wow. Nice. Because once I leave, I'll come back and it'll be, and look, my favorite ornament, I'll show you before my thing dies. Hold on. Let me see. Tell me if you can see it. Can you see it? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The golden <laughs> owl? <laughs> it's like a golden owl. <laughs> Can you see it? Oh, Survivor. Oh, oh there we go. Oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah. Where did you get that? <laughs> it's singing. Yep. Oh, real did, quick, did you hear it? Yeah. yeah. Real quick, can someone do some screen grabs of this? I forgot to ask if we could do screen grabs so we had a picture of all of us. Oh, that's sure. Some, Yep. All right. You that's want one my, with us actually healthy? That's my big nine yeah. foot tall tree. Yep. Hey, real quick, Sam. <laughs> oh we are still live, but uh, oh. this is gonna be awful. Can you just stay just for like two seconds so we get some screen grabs so I can put it up and say I talked to these Sandra Diaz Twine along with the Billy Garcia. <laughs> I'll hold this in high regard to Richard Hatch. No offense to Richard okay. Hatch. All right. Yeah. Did you guys get some screen grabs? I got one. You look awful, but that's okay. Uh. You can do more. Sandra looks gorgeous. As long as, well, I mean, I want to look, this is my show, I want to look beautiful. No, I'm just being silly. Okay. So I want to thank you. I just wanted to say to Sandra before she leaves, Feliz Dia de Pablo. Thank you. I'm a pig out. You just don't know. No, thank you. I don't, I don't know what that means, but once again, thank you guys so, so much for coming on. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Elise. Thank you, Billy. And of course, thank you so much, Sandra. We'll have to do it again a couple seasons from now. Um, we'll have the exact same technical difficulties we just have. It'll be a blast. <laughs> All right, no problem. Good night, everybody. I'm right. sorry that I was late, and thank no. you for having me. Bye, Billy. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.